But hello, ladies and gentlemen. That's me. Welcome to <laughs> welcome to Journey, my game of the year for 2012, an exclusive for the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4. Sony Computer Entertainment Apprentice. And uh, that's because I'm playing the Portuguese version of the game. But don't worry, the game is dialogue free, so it's not like it's gonna matter. That yes, game, yeah, I've heard that. I have an... never heard of this game. This is... Yeah, first I heard of it was from Pedro as well, but I've heard that it's an epic. Basically, what this happens is, it's pretty much what would happen if Stanley Kubrick made a video game. Stanley Kubrick? The the, the director of well, 2001. Well, I know who that is, but I mean, like, well, his stuff is often a bit more... creepy, and I've heard that this is more charming. Well, not creepy. Uh, Kubrick Michael made a lot of films. He made, I mean, uh... Well, it wasn't... Well, anyway. So this is... So we're gonna start a new journey. So, in what sense would this be like if Stanley Kubrick made a video game? In a sen not in the sense of style, but in the sense of structure. Ah, okay, now I, I can see. And first of all, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most beautiful sand texture I've ever seen in a video game. That's sand? Not bad. Looks like gold. And the music, by God, I love the music in this game. Okay, I should explain the background behind this game. This game was developed by That Game Company, and they're known for also making, uh, they're known for making these kind of artsy, uh, artsy games. They made Flow and Flower for the PS3, and this is their magnum opus, Journey. So, that is company. sand. Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> this is us. So, here's the story of this game. We're a pilgrim, we wake up in this desert, and our first instinct is to move forward. So, let's go. Interesting robe we're wearing. Are the robes ever customizable? Uh, no, they're not. The journey doesn't have a menu, it doesn't have options, it, it just throws you in there with a the secret immersion. So, everyone looks the same. Uh, yes, I, no, no, the, no, not everybody looks, the player characters look the same, but uh, the other characters don't. So basically, um, whatever, um, oh, wait, so wait, 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 so, yeah, my question is like, well, um, you said that there's apparently able to do co-op with this game, right? Yes. So um, I'm saying, if, like, well, if somebody if you connect on, If you connect, if you, turn, if you start this game while uh, signed into the PlayStation Network, uh, you can randomly find a player who's playing at the same time as you, and you yourselves can do the journey together. Um, but here's the interesting thing. Uh, you can communicate via... Um, a special whistling uh, ability, but you can actually communicate via dialogue, and uh, you and you will never know who that person was that you just cooperated with. You don't, you won't even be able to add him as a friend or anything. It's it's mysterious, and you just find him. You, you guys help each other, and that's it. You're done. Nice. This game looks beautiful. It I does, know. doesn't it? It takes real guts to do, you know, to make a desert level of all things appeal to you. I know, I, I, it's mind-blowing already. So, so this yeah, is a, a question so, so we just, about this co-op. Um, do the characters who show up, you know, when you do have co-op, do they look different? No, no, they look exactly the same as me. Uh, I feel okay, like so there's some symbolism here. Uh, there probably is. Uh, that game company is really big on artsy-fartsy games. What but, is uh, that? So... Uh, that, that's a scarf. Basically, I just obtained myself a scarf, and the scarf is put, has two things. First of all, it's kind of my life bar. You know, if I lose my scarf, I die. Uh, second, um, my scarf gives me the ability to uh, float, jump and float, basically. However, I have to have energy on my um, scarf. For example, my scarf now has no light on it, but I'm going to get some light now. You'll see. So, so, it's, oh, so it's when it has light on it that you can uh, do that stuff? Yeah, and I can only do it once. Um, so does like, um, does like bits of the scarf come off bit by bit, and that's sort of wearing away? 
No, no, it's not wearing away. Uh, instead, what happens is every time I get hurt, I lose a bit of my scarf. Wait, you can get hurt by figs? Uh, not, not right now. Um, but it'll become clear uh, later on when we get there. So is this one of those overall basically um, a, a nature versus nurture sort of thing? Or is there an no, actual no, no, no. antagonist? The, the, themes, the themes of the mo of, of the story will become apparent when we finish it. Don't worry. We'll nice. get there. When we finish it? Wow. Okay, so uh, you, you might have noticed that my scarf became longer. That's because mm -hmm. uh, I can find little pickups uh, around the, the levels, which will increase my scarf in size, which of course will allow me to fly, uh, well not fly, uh, float for a longer period of time, and it will also make me survive uh, more attacks than usual. Is our character male or female? It doesn't matter. Oh. That character is supposed to represent you. So hmm. pretty much a generous character done right. Uh, yeah. Okay, so helps now we... they didn't give it a voice. But here's our first hint of, a, of the story. Hmm. Ah, pyramid of sorts. I love the ambience, by the way. Well, I can gather there's something I've to do with this mystical beacon. Yeah. Right up top that, that mountain. Yeah. Yeah, that's our goal. Our goal is to get to that mountain and see what's on top. Okay then. So, so it's a form of pilgrimage. Yes. So, guys. Ready to go on a journey? Okay. Yep. So is this like his home or something? We don't know. It's all you're supposed to interpret what you're saying. Okay then. Uh, Very anyway. interesting. I got right, first, that. First level done. I'm guessing that means saving. Yes. Thank you, Spanish well, class. Since, since the game doesn't have a dialogue at all, I didn't think it was necessary for me to switch oh, it's languages. it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Don't worry, I took Spanish classes. I know a bit of that. <laughs> the credits will be in English, so... Oh, that's nice. Wait, why I take the it credits that... be in English, yet everything else isn't? Uh, oh, things like credits and menu screams are always in English. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice. Like Last of Us, for example. Last of Us has a Portuguese dub, but uh, the credits are still in, in Portuguese text, Portuguese subtitles, but the, the credits are still in English. Yeah. It's always like that. The only yeah. thing I've noticed is that it sounds like you're using some sort of sound or a song or music of sort to do some of these abilities. You are. Um, that's a little... They Apparently they took inspiration from dolphin sonars to create that sound. Oh. Huh. So... Sort of, so, uh, now, so I guess it so could be interpreted as sort of a shout out to Echo the Dolphin. Maybe. Um, so yeah, basically what we're doing right now is we have to create a bridge so we can get to the other side. So, and so for that we have to get to each of these scarves and activate them. We can also, if we take some time to explore this area, we can also find another uh, power up for our scarf, which I will do. Oh, the scarf has power ups. No, it, no the power up only makes it longer. Which, oh. uh, which of course will make me float for a longer period of time and uh, get well bigger life bar, uh, more resistant to damage, obviously. So, is it working in a case like, well, the abilities you have sort of have to do with the environment? Dude, don't, yeah. don't think, don't, don't think about the gameplay in this game is very simplistic. You're okay. just uh, trust me. Don't don't think much about it. It's just just go along for the ride and enjoy yes. it. No problem. This game. This game was meant for you to play with your instincts and not your brain. Oh, I'm liking what it's doing so far. I know, it's like, I'm not speaking much because so, I'm so immersed. Yeah. 
That's why it's a good idea for us to do this game, just the three of us, you know, not have a lot of people talking. Fair enough. So our uh, scarf will eventually become a bridge? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, what we do is, basically, those big scarves are basically uh, in column switches, I guess, and we have to turn them all on, so we, uh, each time we activate one of them, uh, a, a, a scarf. Basically, this game is in love with scarves, basically, for some reason. <laughs> uh, so pretty much like Global uh, 5's fascination with British people. Everything is a scarf. Uh, creatures are made of scarves. Uh, Scarves are a life bar. Scarves allow us to fly. You can fly as long as you're touching a scarf. It's uh, really? this, this game is a scarf finish. <laughs> well, now. See, there, see um, as soon as I touch that, it... Um, there you go. Let's oh. make a, one more scarf bridge. a ruined pillar of part of a dragon turned stone. And those look like hands. And I again, maybe that's they just my hands. interpretation. Hmm. It's symbolism, but it's the not symbolism that's screaming to be noticed. The, per the, the purpose of this game is it's meant to be a personal journey, and each person is supposed to take their own meaning from it. Exactly. Your journey. It's your journey. Take your own meaning from it. And that's exactly what I'm doing. It's like making And the own... sandstorm looks strangely realistic. Exactly. It's like, it's giving you the ability to make your own headcanon, except you don't really have to make fun of the game to do it. Pretty much, yeah. That's why I kept saying that this is pretty much Stanley Kubrick, because that's pretty much what 2001 A Space Odyssey is. This game is made for your interpretation. Yeah, this is a... Um... Uh, this is of course it's an it's it has the spirit of an indie game even though it's it was financed by Sony. Okay, so we've just found that. So our scarf just got bigger and fancier by the looks of it. Yep. Okay. One more nice scarf. Watch of red. <laughs> red and okay. gold, two of my favorite colors. Well, red's my ultimate favorite color. Alright, only one more scarf. No, red is one of my favorites since autumn colors are all my favorite. Mm -hmm. Autumn colors are awesome. Like that, we have ourselves a bridge. Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. So, let's cross the bridge, shall we? What will we find on that side of the bridge? Let's see. Who knows oh, what oh we'll my find. god, I hate this music so much. It's amazing how immersive this soundtrack is. You know, I'm watching this and I'm thinking, why is David Cage? No, why is Sony wasting their money on David Cage? Well, they're not waste Well, they're, they're not just wasting money on David Cage. They're wasting money on a lot of developers, including that game company. Which one? The one that made this game. The, the oh. developer of this game is literally called that game company. Oh, how about that? What really? Yep. <laughs> we, we saw the we saw the logo at the beginning. That game company. Oh, oh wow. When you say that Sony's wasting their money on them too, are you saying like this is their only good game or Sony, Sony <laughs> wastes their money on uh, for example Media Molecule, the creators of Little Big Planets, uh, Naughty Dog, this company. They, they have a lot their own uh, uh, Sony computer entertainment software videos. Oh, not, not, I understand now. It's not just they the uh, content Jim is only one of many. I guess if there's one thing Sony's always really been adept at, it's always trying to get exclusive content, as has seen in the Arkham series, like where you have Arkham Asylum, where you only have the Joker missions really on PS3, and then, you know, a lot of the DLC and the skins only found on the PS3 version for Origins. 
and the exclusive content for Destiny. Yeah. And Nina okay, one more cutscene. Cut special about that white version of us. I'm guessing there's something like official guards or keepers of something. So building the bridge. Hmm, almost makes you wonder if those scarves are the spirit of those white hooded figures. Some sort of temple. Hmm. Oh, well, how about that? Ah. Oh, so it was a statue. Okay, let's keep going. And now we're going to get into some of the. Mo By the way, Chiro, you thought the game looked gorgeous before, uh, until now? Well, wait till we get to the next level. Okay, then. Let's have a look at this. Wow. Pink sand. Oh, right, that's it. I forgot. Uh, it's not yet the time I, the part I was uh, thinking about. Oh, yeah, there's our goal there. I have only ever seen pink sand once. My yeah. God. This looks so beautiful. Uh, Barbados. Oh, oh my god. Uh, I like that little sliding motion he gives. It's like a sense of grinding. Uh, oh, not oh, if you oh, oh, like, oh, trust me, there's a lot of uh, that in this game. Grinding through sand is so satisfying when you're actually playing. I guess these people are used to it. I mean, it's like they're gliding almost, especially when they're going downhill. Yep. I won't go around at the speed of sound. Places <laughs> to go, I am on a uh. journey. Hello. Oh. So, we just, made it, we just made ourselves our first friend on this journey. Oh. Nice. So, is it like an actual friend or more so a pet? Uh, take your own conclusions, Joba. Okay, then. Looks like a kite, but a scarf as well. I take it every single area in this game is revolved around deserts. Uh, not everyone, no. Oh. Oh. Because I was gonna say, I mean, this is the first desert-themed level in any game that I've genuinely not found in any way boring. I know! I'm surprised! <laughs> I'm amazed at that! We need more people like this who can put a spin on things. I guess if we had more people like that, it wouldn't be as special. I mean, I don't care that there's not a lot in the area. It just... it's... this is great. Yeah. The visual perspective and the immersion is just... outstanding. I never thought I'd ever like a desert level. <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever be excited by a desert level. <laughs> What's yet, going on? here we are. <laughs> Oh, look at that. We made ourselves some new friends. So, do all f your companions look like this? Or are there any sort of different tiers? Or, uh, uh, we're gonna find some different... Oh, look at that. We can, oh, they uh, can carry you. Yeah. So, can their scarf power run out as well? No, they're, they're, uh, they have the natural ability to fly. Oh, so is there any like punishment or downfalls like riding them too much? No, there's not. Oh, that's nice. Basically, oh. the, the the goal here, right now, we're basically following them. Well, but we can also find this here. Hello. More hieroglyphs. Well, basically what I call it, if you pictures that tell a story. The 
those clouds in the background, you get a sense that they're sort of reaching out for something. Like it's, it's like they're reaching towards the top of the mountain. Hmm. I can't wait to see what's at the top. So we don't really know the true nature of the plot until the end? No. Wow. That's the, that's the whole mystery. There's I'm really some, curious there, now. Like, there, there's, <laughs> there's some... What is, that's your, your goal is to get to that top of the mountain. What is there? What is there? Why do you need to go there? You need, you need to go there to find out. Oh, there's a lot more of our fine, scarfed flying friends. So what... Tell me, you make a friend, apparently. Do they ever, apparently, have to leave you at some point in the journey? Well, that's well, that's usually how things are in life. You gain friends, but you can't really be friends with everyone forever. Good point. And our scarf just got bigger. Nice. And more golden -y. The sense of ruins, though. I wonder, were these ruins possibly caused by a possible antagonist? Uh, I don't know. It looks like they've just been buried in a sandstorm. I guess. But yeah, is there an actual bad guy to this film, a game? Uh, um, no, not really. Oh. So is there any sense of conflict? There is a sense of conflict later on. Is it personal conflict or...? or... Personal conflict. I see. Uh, I'm sure this game will find something good to do with that. It will. Trust me. I'm amazed at the sense of excitement I'm getting from crossing a desert. I know, it's like, I want to know what's at the top of that mountain, like, right now. <laughs> yeah. And yet the journey all the same feels worth it, in a sense. How do you do yeah, that? No matter what's up there. I, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I had to say that any company every, is every, 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 every time, Every time someone gets into, a, into the, the, the classic discussion of our video games art, I always point to this game. Because if there, that's why I always say, if there is a game that proves that video games are an art form. It's this game. Video games are art when handled by the right people. And hey, look at that. Um, there's a we can see our goal right there in the background. Ooh. We still got a long way to go, though. We do. But we must press on. Oh wow, that's a very high mountain. My. God, the lighting, it looks so gorgeous. Oh my God. Everything looks amazing. And yet, this is not yet the, the most eye-popping part of the game. There's, there's going to be a part uh, in, a short, in a short while that, trust, it, it always makes me have an orgasm for my eyes. It's just, oh my <laughs> God. An eye -gasm. Yes, an eye -gasm. Uh, I should also explain something. Uh, when we're doing co-op in this game, we can use, of course, the, the little whistling thing to call upon our friend. Hey, look, there's something here, or, you know, you can only communicate using that particular whistling ability. You can use Morse code with it if you want. Um, whatever. Basically, that's our only means of communication with the second player. Alright, getting closer. Getting closer. Slowly, but we are getting there. Quite a big change in music. And everything. Can only mean something. Something is about to change. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
Okay, we need to find out what's going on. Let's climb this building. Yep, our friend is leading us toward it, so let's go. It's weird. It's almost like it's a sense like it's almost like an ocean of sand. You know, it almost looks, you know, sort of like how, you know, you get that murky feeling when you're underwater. And there's even a bit something that's like bubbles, only done with sand. <laughs> Is most of this game mainly taking place in the deserty area? Most, most of the game takes place in the desert area, yes. But, uh, the... And I don't mind that one bit. Me neither. <laughs> but uh, we're going to have Start to change of scenery uh, in a bit. That's nice. Wow, this is beautiful. I <laughs> know I'm saying that a lot. It's very eerie around here. Oh, of yeah. course. This, this is. What's going on? Well, we just. I guess we're we're done playing with with our friends. We have to split up now. Right, one more, per some more praying, which of course means another cutscene. Mm. So I'm guessing these white hooded figures are white bigger versions of us. They get the sense that they're maybe they're guardians, or maybe they're actually the actual people turned to stone and can only be brought out by this ritual. feel that maybe some of these, the story that's being told by this, may parallel with what we've been doing. Like, that earlier one did bring I up the bridge. I sort of realized that earlier on. Yeah. It's almost like a map. Hmm. To show you your progress. In a very artistic way. I like that. Oh, I guess they're free to go. Alright. More Onwards. friends. Yes. Guess we need them to <laughs> clear the area. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, wait. No. <laughs> oh, to the next level. A little break for our saving. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for eyegasm. Well, actually, um, the second part of this level is the true eyegasm thing. But uh, yeah, this this one is also. Everything is beautiful. There's nothing that isn't oh beautiful in this game. It's moving so smoothly, yet it feels so nice and quick paced. Everything just flows. You know, indie games, you know, indie companies really have stepped their game up with, like, games like this, Shovel Knight, um, that, um, well, I guess Concept technically is an indie, but, you know, Concept, Yacht Club Games, and the makers of Five Nights with Freddy's, that game's also immersive in its own right. I have to admit, in, what is it about indie games that just makes them so capable of such greatness? It's because I'm like, uh... They They're not corrupted by corporate greed. Exactly. True, as much. I guess, and I guess that since they have less money, they can't really afford to just screw around with the audience. Okay, um, yes. Um, this is something that was mentioned not too long ago, but I completely agree with it. Um, although, yes, it's true, corporate greed can be a problem. The thing is, money is needed to make craft, otherwise there will be no craft at all. Yeah. And I think which the is sense why, is that with which, indie games, they sort of like, they why, make their money's worth in particular, because they have which, to make sure that they can make money in order to do it right. Which 
Well, yes. I like Sony because uh, they always they take they they appreciate uh, the value of craft. That's why they that's why they finance get uh, developers like that and company. True. I mean, hey, I guess they see value in even people like Quantic Dream. I can't really fault them for that. I guess. No, the thing, no, the, the, the people at Quantic Dream are very talented, it's just... Well, I know, I missed David Cage. I was talking it, about it, David Cage. Yeah, it, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 it's the boss who's the problem. <laughs> probably I suppose everyone who's... has an ego, but David Cage's ego is way too big. Yeah. Even bigger than Ridley. So basically, what I'm trying to do right now is that there's a, a there's an, a one more power up for our scarf on that on that platform over there. So I'm trying to. Uh, that's a the, gorgeous uh, sun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the sun almost looks like water. Yeah. All right. So now that I'm on the higher ground, let's try getting that power up. I see it. Mm -hmm. Oh what man, we're this? already 31 minutes over. Don't worry, we still have a, no a whole hour of this game. I know, it's just, wow, time flies magically with this game. That's because we're enjoying it so much, and we're not even playing it. Yeah. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves. Oh. Haven't we seen this sand before, though? Uh, don't worry. Uh, we'll this, get there. This, okay. And this time, this part will end in a different way. So, are these? Do those things help boost you, or are they just a guide, pretty much? You they're know, just. They're, they're, at this point, at this point, they're pretty much guiding me. By the way, if I uh, um, go for 20 of these things, I get a trophy. Nice. Is there any punishment that happens if you don't go for them? I don't know. This, this, uh, I can't die. It, yeah, I'll, I'll here it comes. Whoa. Oh wow. Um, this was an indie game. It's Everything's so orange. It was been financed by Sony, so technically not. Oh wait, not. that's right. Oh yeah. my god. Whoa. Oh my god. Oh. oh my god, it's... 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 Wow. Oh my god. I swear, this scene alone is... It's like one of the best advertisements for the PS3 I've ever seen before. Yes, why wasn't this the advertisement for the PS3? Yeah! <laughs> Just this! <laughs> well, the game is, else. well, the game was is being ported to the PS4, so you'll be able to go Ooh. to it. Nice! Because I'm really hoping that when the Last of Us bundle comes out, I'm really hoping that I'll be able to get it for Christmas. Yeah, I'm sort of uh, hoping last... that pretty much most of the stuff that comes on, you know, exclusive to the PS3 will be available for PS4. In one shape I'll be buying one. this when it comes to the PS4. Same I, here. I have not... No yeah. question about it. Yep. And well, now a change of scenery. Hmm. Ooh. Another statue. Another wise one. That's what I call them. Which now. means more insight into the story. And yep. further progress. You know, you have to wonder how some of these ideas go. Is like, well, is it like just a second? Somebody comes up with this idea, or was it like a collective idea? Uh, Genova Shang, the creator of the game. And he said that um, his idea with this game was to create a uh, basically make the players feel like they've been on an emotional uh, journey uh, of discovery. Ah. Hmm. 
Seems like there's a sense of conflict here between them. If a ribbon being broken, well, a scarf actually. Hmm. Quite yeah. ominous that cutscene. Yeah. So let's see what we can find here. Now we go to something that's more. Cave of Wonders fiend. I'm guessing. Ambience. Yeah, ambience. So much of that. <laughs> hmm. What's going on in the background? Well, I guess we won't be going back out that way. but also a jewel. I guess it's an igneous. So, yeah, it's in this part that we're gonna meet the quote-unquote enemies of the game, basically, as the ominous music uh, is pretty much already kind of subconsciously getting us ready for it. I was actually just about to say, this journey is so peaceful, but, you know, we're about to run into enemies. Yep. Well, well I guess well, that's ever at least part of a journey, and there's got to be some sense of peril. Conflict? Yeah. So, is, it, is there an overall antagonist running these enemies? Or are they no. more sort of like, you know, nature, that sort of stuff? Na nature. I get it. Okay. And I take it this is where we find them? Uh, ap after this part. Where okay. Right now we're using we these magic... water? Because it sort of looks like it. No, it's not water. I, I know what you mean, it looks like it, but it's not. I like that effect. It looks like bubbles, but it's actually dust. This is shaping up to be my favorite part of the game at the minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now look, those scars look like jellyfish. That's cute. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the face of one of the guardians. Well, but all glowy and statuesque. Oh, um, wow, you came out of nowhere. <laughs> what is that? Wait, uh, wait, hold on, that looks uh, like one of those things that we saw earlier in the first level. You know, the thing yep. that I said looked like a dragon statue. Yep, that's it, alright. Those are our enemies. What was one of them doing lying about? Was it that one dead? You know, the one uh, it, it, was, it was resting in the sand, but apparently I woke him up. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You're saying this is the same guy from the first level? No, it's not. It's just, but it's the same kind of being. I know, I know, I know. I, I know, I know. I was asking about the first one. I was wondering if it was dead, because it also looked like it was broken. 
Uh, I don't think it was, no. Okay, so now we're going to see exactly what these things can do. They have a searchlight. So, let's see. There's some scouts over there. They look like they're in danger. Going... Oh my! Well, that can be good. Did it just eat them with its eye? Uh, it is, it, it, well, um, well, you destroy them, and since they're, they're not coming back, so that can't be good. So, is it a natural predator, or is it something of a villain? It's a natural predator. Oh, shit. Oh, did you just bump into one? Yes. So... Oh... Can you ever affect how many there are, or are you destined to run into one? Oh shit. Oh no. Panic. Daddy. Oh, you lost a bit of scarf there. Yep. Is the scarf also your health? I've told you that, uh, at the beginning of the oh. game. Okay. So, yeah, question. Oh, no, I thought it was just the, um, the longer it is, the more powerful they are. So does, like, like, bumping into those statues cause them to awaken? Yes, as you just saw, actually. Ah. Yes. <laughs> so, what's the max that can come to life? Like, three, because I saw that other one which you avoided. Yeah? to escape the predators. Uh -huh. Yes. So what exactly is the max that can ever that you can awaken apparently? Uh, there's no max, it's just that uh, if the predator sees me, he'll shake he'll shake me. Like Oh god. Oh boy. Oh no. yeah. wow. Yeah, because I know like it's other stuff. Save some, save some, save some, save some. Yeah. Screw, screw you. So yeah, um, because I noticed that, like, well, there were other statues oh, that, was... that you avoided touching. Would those have come to life if you touched them? Yes. Ah, uh, so like, at most, I was like, asking, like, well, what was the max amount of things that could actually be chasing you? Yep. Wow. Well, that was, well, that was scary. <laughs> Exhilarating. That was intense. I like it. Is there a way to actually fight those things? No. Nope. We just have to stop away from them. Oh well. Oh, the predator's eye. Hello. Covered by sand. Or fallen civilization? Hmm. Maybe that might explain the stars, like fallen stars. Hey, that's you. Or is it? Hmm. Maybe Was that meant to symbolize the mountain? Uh I don't know, Shu, like, what do you think? Um... Don't, don't ask me, uh, what stuff is. You're, <laughs> you're, you're, 
You're supposed to figure it out first. Don't hit you, Roy. I mean, I go. I've been speaking my mind a lot. How about you, Abigail, with the ins with the um interpretation? I don't know what to think. Well, have no, a stand no, it. Well, uh, when we get to I mean, well, when we well, when we get to the end, uh, it will become clear anyway. So, so maybe. I, I mean, what I've been wondering is why is um, a female interpretation needed? Because that's what I've been told before starting this playthrough. Uh, I, I, I honestly don't know. Teo was the one who insisted on it. Yeah, I know. Teo Scavin. Oh. Who insisted it. I don't know what he's expecting from me then. <laughs> I, 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 I know, I, I even said to Joe, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> I didn't really know either, but Tio was so adamant, and at the time, it was only us there. <laughs> well, our protagonist seems gender neutral, and also from, like, judging from the cutscenes, like, they don't seem to have... Maybe that's why he uh, wants a, both a takes. Race like that. Maybe that's why he uh, wants both takes, is that, like, well, um... I guess from a female and male perspective, because the character is genderless. Hmm. That would make a bit more sense. I guess it also helps oh. that we finally do have a crew member. Okay, so we this fog... no specific rates. Mm -hmm. So this, this, so this fog right here, uh, every time I'm touching this fog, I have unlimited flights. So... Nice. Really? So in the a way, it's like water. Kind of, It yeah. allows you to flow through it. Well, we lost half of our scarf, but fortunately, we can still increase it a bit more. Do we ever run into those predator things again? We do. Ah. Are they the only predators, or do we see other things? No, they're the only predators. So they're the only oh. bad guys in particular that you are against? Not really bad guys, they're just, like Pedro said, they're natural predators, yeah. so they're doing That's what they do. So they're the only thing that can really hurt you and take away from your scar. Uh, yeah. Moral ambiguity. Nice. Mm -hmm. I still get the sense of another conflict somewhere from an earlier... Um, there will be. But personal conflict this time. Ah, uh, yeah. It's like man versus man sort of conflict. Uh, no, just literally personal conflict, just you, um, ah, but I won't say. self versus self. Mm -hmm. But, no, not that, but uh, you'll see. Okay. There's one thing I can gather, this thing has several themes, one of which being sand, light, scarves, of course, and, um, also a sense of darkness and contrast. Yep. I love the scarf jellyfish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we keep rising. Basically the goal here is to climb this tower and we have to keep raising the, uh, the fog level. Oh look! Oh. We just made ourselves a new friend. This is probably my favorite music track so far. My favorite music track in the game actually is the final one. Really? Yep. It's the main theme being played again, but in such a more uh, somber tone. Mm -hmm. Alright, some more hieroglyphics. Oh, look at that. It's the scarf bridge we built. You know, this may be an inappropriate time to bring up, but I have realized that this may actually become a trinity of, you know, indie games that we really grow to love. Like, let's see, Shovel Knight, for me, this game for you, which is technically indie, and then Five Night at Freddy's for Sheroy. 
Oh no, I think I like this game a lot quicker. <laughs> oh yes, 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 yes. Of course you like them in different ways. Like, for this, you love it for its immersion and lack of lack of spoken narrative. For Shovel Knight, you love it for its simple gameplay mechanics, yet also its many homages to countless game franchises while also throwing in puns and also throwing in a, a huge load of narrative, especially for an 8-bit game. And then Five Night at Freddy's, I guess you like for a sort of giving back dignity to the horror genre when it's sort of been run into the ground at this oh, point. Oh, oh, definitely, because I, I'm actually one of those people who is very difficult to scare. That game did a fantastic job. Yeah, me too, because, like, well, so there's some things I'm afraid of, but overall, I don't really scare that easily. Hence why I've been able to handle no. some games. But, yeah, Five Night at Freddy's, it legitimately frightened me. Same here. Uh, indie games can be just awesome like that. Okay, so we finally, just like last time, we made ourselves a scarf bridge. So let's get to the top. I like to think that the scarf bridges um, signify a sense of unity, working together, as well as also a sense of light. Something that helps keep this world together. Unity, Whatever works for you. They managed to... Well, hey, I mean, since it's the game built around making interpretations, I guess I might as well find my inner self and share with the audience. Nice. Wow, Alright, that's good. It's lit enough, like... It's like... It's like a cool, nice park of sorts. With all the lights glowing it up, it's like it's a gorgeous skyscraper all right one more level finished so time to pray and one more cutscene let's see what the story gives us this time This looks familiar. Hmm. Weird, the background's starting to get so darker. It's a recap on your journey. And a little preview of what's coming across next. Interesting. You know, it's amazing. We've pretty much gone this far without really cracking a joke. What exactly can you crack at this? Whoa, well, there is nothing to joke about. This is this is wonderful. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I'm going to go into the nice winter wonderland theme. Well, a snow theme, I'm taking it. Yes. Well, we've already had um, sand that resembles water. And we've so... had a temple... We're having sand that resembles hey, snow. Hey, this reminds me a lot of a snow scene from the Sinbad movie. Weird. So, oh, yeah. no, wait, it is actually snow. We can see our goal. It's right there. 
Let's get to it. We're getting ever closer. We're almost two thirds of the way. Oh boy. Oh gosh. Okay, so here's the specific uh, challenge of this particular part of the game. Um, there's wind, and if this wind catches all of me, it might damage my scarf. Oh. So every so, so every time there's uh, wind coming, I have to protect myself by hiding behind these uh, pillars. Oh, so the elements are sometimes work against you. Well, yes, that's how they work a lot of the time. <laughs> True. So yeah, let's be careful. Ah, oh, damn snow. It's making my scarf dirty. Yeah. Hopefully once we melt off, it'll wash away. Well, hey, guess this is weather very appropriate for a scarf. I can see what you meant when you said that this is definitely a game that, you know, sort of would feel very jaggered and fragmented by splitting it into parts. Told you. What do you think, Shiroi? I... It... It would have definitely <laughs> ruined it if it was split up. Yeah. Because I... Normally, after a while, if I were to watch a video this long, I'd get tired, but I'm so immersed. I, I've not been bored once. I know, I've right? not, not paid attention. Everything is just... That's why I insisted on Jova. Jova, we need this to be one part. Well, I'm glad I decided to take your advice on that. Yes, thank you, Jova, for agreeing. You're welcome. You see, Jova, how good things happen when you listen to me? Hey, I never said they haven't. In fact, quite a few good things have happened from me listening to you. I mean, hey. <laughs> I mean, hey. Yeah. Alright. Alright, only Well, I know I said me. before that... Oh, carry on. What were you saying? No, no, go ahead, Shirley. Go ahead, Shirley. Oh, oh. um, I know I said before that it can, it can work if you split certain games up into certain parts the right way. But I feel like with this game, there is no possible way you could have found any point to split it. Yeah, I mean it's. Yeah. I mean it is. I mean it's not a game. Like, it wouldn't work in any way. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's not, not really. a game like you know your everyday platformer, where of course you have story segments that are actually good for splitting it up, or a game that's basically level to level to level, literally there in a tin can. No, this is like this is a journey. You don't stop a journey for however amount of time you keep going. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter whether you stop to sleep or something. I mean, heck, sleeping, resting, that's all part of the journey. Exactly. Yes. Um, alright, let's keep going. We've gotten through the windy part. You know, you get a sense that these things are ominous in the sense that you almost feel like they're tombstones. That's an interesting take. Yeah. And we can see the moon. Wow. So it's apparently night time. Alright, more ruins for us to climb. Oh, oh boy. How did you get out? It's an, I'm pretty sure they're not the same from before. It makes me all the more wonder. We, I'm pretty sure that we definitely saw one of these back in the first level, but it was definitely an active 
You have to wonder if it was dead or if it fell asleep. Mm. Hmm. Maybe it was just part of the circle of life, and maybe that's where they go to die. Alright, let's keep going, keep going. Yeah, we can... I don't really see the mountain, but I'm sure it's out there. It's because we, can, we just can't see it because of the snowstorm. Let's hope it's not just misleading us. <laughs> let's hope we're going the right way. It'd really suck if all of a sudden we came up at the top and realized, Oh, snap, I should have been going this way, actually. Wrong mountain. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to look for it, but right now using the camera, but uh, Snowstorm is blocking it, I'm sure. Don't worry, we'll see it in a bit. on. <laughs> oh boy. Don't worry. Well, every step gets us closer. We just have to press on. 
Let's hope it doesn't make us colder as well. That didn't sound too good. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, I know. We have these uh, little safe spots. Uh oh. Are those things like search. determined to find you? Well, they're not determined to find me specifically. They're just looking for something to feast upon, I guess. They're almost like those fish. I mean, I, I can't remember the name of them, sorry, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Dog sharks? Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Angler uh, fish? Um, an angel fish. You know, one that dangles its light. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, let's keep going. The end is in sight. Practically 20 minutes away. Fortunately, we're almost done. And after this, after this, these two safe spots will be safe from, from these predators. Oh, almost a shame. I was going to like them. Oh, no, please. I don't like them at all. They damaged, <laughs> my, they damaged my scarf. My beautiful, beautiful scarf that took me, uh, that I took such great care of to make it grow. True, yeah. that is mean of them. Granted, they're not as dick as just Jaws is. <laughs> they were Jaws, he'd completely play you with you You can't really blame them, them, I mean... This is, this is what they do. Yeah, nature versus nature. They're not actively trying to find you, they just want food, as Pedro said. Yep. Indeed. That's what I interpret anyway. Aw, oh, the friends. Wait, how is it safe for them? Except for who, sorry? The friends. Oh, the friends we've met. Uh, oh, the friends are in, other, in, other, in the desert area. They're fine. Well, at least I hope they're fine. I don't know pretty, if they're still there. Well, you know, basically, I'm pretty sure that they, uh, that, you know, some of those kite-looking things appear here as well, too, right? Uh, why do you keep asking me, uh, plot-related stuff, Java? You're what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I love this camera shot, by the way. Yeah. Curiosity, what time are you at? Uh, one hour, eight minutes, and 41 seconds. 42, oh, shit. 44. No, yeah, I'm, I'm there too. I'm sort of at yeah. one minute and nine. I'm sort of at one hour and nine minutes. Well, one. Uh, well, I mean, one hour nine minutes and well, forty-two pause, seconds. Pause, pause at one minute and nine seconds, and okay. we'll tell you when when to. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I'm now paused at 50. one minute nine. Okay, okay, okay. I'm basically now paused at one hour nine minutes and fifty seconds. Nine minutes and fifty seconds. Yes. Okay, then you'll have to one wait fifty seconds. Okay. Then you'll have to wait. Then you'll have to wait fifty seconds for us. That's sort of why I asked about the friends, because that's basically what I call those. All right, Kite you're in the face. you're in the part me and Shiloh are now. Okay, got it. But yeah, I don't wonder. Um, what exactly? Um, are they like um also possibly prey for those giant predator things? Oh no no no! The predators only attack moving uh scarves. Wait, but living are they living, moving as well? Things that move, like me, like for example, you know, uh. the the, scar the scarves that are there, they're just you know. Well, then what what about is the strange obsession okay, with scarves? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, all right. but what about um, the flock of scarves? Alright, uh, start your video in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay. But yeah, I basically um, have to ask, what, uh, what about that, um, that flock of scarves that got eaten or gobbled up back down in the desert ruins? Well, they were moving, weren't they? They looked alive. I guess, but how are the friends different? 
of the friends we met uh, be, uh, before we got into the underground ruins, they were in the desert area. So I'm guessing maybe they didn't have to... Look at that, see? I just lost a bit of my spark. Uh. Because, of the, because of the wind. Certainly is looking rather frostbitten. Okay, so this is a part where basically I have to use these rocks to cover myself in the wind. It's going to be a little difficult, but we shall get there. Oh crap. Can't give up. We're almost there. We're almost there. Alright, this time I think I managed to get up with these stairs. Or not. Uh. If you first oh. don't succeed, try, try, try again. I'll just... The journey's worth it. Yes. We'll, ju we'll just keep trying until we manage to get what we want. Alright. Let's get through. I have a mountain to... I have a mountain I have to get to. Okay, a little scarf to help, to help me. All right, we got done for this ruin. Now let's just keep going, keep going. We're nearing to the top. Look, there it is, our goal right there. Just a bit more of a climb up. Oh, oh my scar. Oh, man. Scar's really taking a beating. I remember this. Well, it does get colder the higher you climb. Indeed, but now there's also lightning. Doesn't lightning need heat? Not necessarily, I think. Well, I do have to wonder, this does remind me of an earlier cutscene that involves lightning, thunder in the distance, as well as the summit. And amazingly, somehow this will all get explained and wrapped up by the end climax, you say? Yep. Maybe there'll be like another dimension or a completely different world. One driven with uh, uh, red carpets and like, you know, a completely different dimension. Like, something like... Shoot, I can't remember what I was thinking of, but yeah. I get the feeling that this may be a portal to maybe this other dimension which these guardians live in. Come on, dude, you can make it. You know, a video game has never made me feel like this, but I feel like I'm the one on this journey. Me too. It's like, I feel like I'm the one pressing through. I feel like I am that very person there. It's like watching myself. Oh wow, the the slow walking animation is amazing. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Pedro, is there like a deaf animation for like when you do run out of all scarves? Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. Why? Well... Do we die at some point? Is he about to die mm. right there? Oh, wow! That's the death animation? Well, I'm not surprised, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's the most realistic I know. form. So, do I have to start from a checkpoint or something now? No, I'm wondering if this is actually oh. a part of it. No, it, see, it's a part of it. Ah, We're supposed to... Be. Yeah. 
I this is amazing. I'll say. Oh. Hello. The guardians we've met on the way, perhaps? Mm. From the statues? I guess. We're alive. Yay, we got, our, we got ourselves a new scar. Wow. And it's quite long. Longer than before. Will to live. And soar. Oh, you guys again. Wait. And now we're gonna listen to the, my, my favorite the music track in the game. The opening theme, I believe you said it was? It's the main it's a mix of the main theme and some original not the choose. It's the predators only they seem In friendlier. Scarf form. They seem friendlier now. So wait, the predators while well, this time were like corrupted scars? Again, hey. Joe, don't ask me for that. Mine my, my that, Okay, you okay, come okay, up okay, with okay, 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 okay. Let me interpret. I'm thinking that those two were corrupted by some sort of conflict going amongst the Guardians, in a sense. Because, like, there's one of those that showed something going on when they tore the scarf apart in some sort of conflict. I'm guessing maybe this race is some sort of harmonic convergence, which gives them a better sense. In fact, all this time and long, they might have been the extremes of our friends. That's my take on it. What about you, Shiroi? Corrupted by themselves, I guess? Misguidance? Yeah. This this it, game seems to be about guidance. That might have to do with why they're constantly So I say misguidance. Yeah, maybe that might have to do with why they're constantly searching about with the light. And they go towards it. While they may think that they're helping something, they're actually attacking it in real life. Here, they can see the light. And we're being taken to the top of the mountain. But yeah, Pedro, um, since I want to end this on a high note, let's talk right now um, about the death animation. You say that, like, well, if you run out of Scar, that's apparently running out of health. Is there, like, a particular death animation for that, or was that uh, what we it, saw? It, it, you, you, just, you just die realistically, like, we just, we just did in the... Um... You die realistically depending on your environment. Yep. Ah. Uh, Which is wonderful. Oh my god, I love this music so much. So like, so like in the desert, do you like also face fall like I'm um, doing? Like oh, you can't die in the desert. No, you can't die in the desert. You can only die starting from the moment you, you find those predators. Well, yeah, well, yeah. But I mean, well, you, you technically find. Well, I take them. it that's because um, it seems like your environment is the desert, so you're probably used to being there if that's the case. Yeah. Um, well. Well, when we're... Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I was also talking about, like, well, you know, the desert ruins where you run into them the first time. Like, if they can take away enough of your scar. Like, I agree with Pedro now. This is definitely the best music track in the game. Agreed, absolutely. We're almost at the top. Fantastic journey. Come on. Still a bit <laughs> more. I want to know now. <laughs> Can only take so much suspense. That whole sequence was beautiful, though. The snow. It looks textured like the sand, yet you still get that it's snow. Uh, yeah. Okay, now shut up. Now let, let's all shut up and listen to the music. Okay. Okay.
A little bit more. Look at that. Huh? It just came from the mountain. Yes. Was that Basically. us? Um? Yes. I we're now a shooting. We're, we're now a shooting star. Life's that, journey? Yes. This is a game about really? life. Really? Oh and now, and, and now, every time you play this game online, um, you'll see shooting stars in the sky, and each shooting star is a person who completed the game. Online, I mean. Fascinating. That's both beautiful and slightly depressing. Yeah. I mean... He went all that way just to... die? Well, we already died before we reached the mountain. mountain the mountain itself is uh, our... They're being set free, in other words. Exactly. Ah. I mean, that scene was essentially the Guardians helping you complete your journey of life. Well, while the, <laughs> while, well, while the credits are gone... Oh, and that's... Uh, position for you warning me that my controller's battery is running low. Fortunately, it only happened in the credits. Yeah. Okay, so while the credits are going, here's uh, a picture made by this Koi from SSMB. Uh, uh, and this is pretty much, I pretty much agree 100% with what's written here. It is Journey Explained. I shall read it for our audience. <clears throat> okay. Journey is not Journey is not a normal game by any means. Without the use of a single line of dialogue, it manages to be absolutely delightful and morbidly depressing all at the same time. Creating a beautiful blend of emotions unlike anything we've ever seen in the game. There's a reason why this game is often called a work of art. Chapter 1. Birth. The game opens with a vast wasteland full of nothing but sand and some ruins. You open your eyes and get out of the sand, unsure of who you are and what your goal is. In the distance you see a couple of pillars with ribbons on them, and with nothing else to do, you wander towards them like a curious child. On reaching them, you see a tall mountain like a green, with a gleaming light up on top. Lacking any sort of abilities or underlying purpose, you decide to walk toward it eventually getting your bearings and learning to move a lot more swiftly. The game mechanics are beginning to make a bit more sense at, at this point as well, so with this basic understanding of this world, you set off on your journey. Chapter 2, Childhood. So you, now you've learned the ropes a bit, and you've decided on your destination, that peak in the summit in the distance. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. As you venture through the desert, your path remains unclear, and the only thing leading you forward is your own curiosity taking you to once beautiful locales now covered in sand and dirt. There are ruins strewn about the desert, and everyone finds a way to captivate you, promising the possibility of a scarf extension or some other interesting thing to take a look at. At this point in the game, you also meet a partner for the first time, just as one would in real life. You don't make friends as a baby, but as a young child, you and your friend venture forward, captivated by the beauty of the desert. Chapter 3, Ad Adolescence, which is the... the, the level where we got that eyegasm moment. <laughs> They've even got a screenshot for it. After journeying through vast expanses of sand and stunning ruins, you finally achieve a sense of confidence. The scarf, which controls your ability to jump, has grown to the length, allowing you to soar through the air like a majestic bird. Despite not really having much of an understanding of your underlying purpose in life, you're still you've still established a clearer sense of direction for where you want to go, straight to the summits. So where you, there you go, surfing along the sand like an expert snowboarder and marveling at the beauty of the world is beauty the world is presenting you. Like most teenagers, you've grown fond of excitement. Why walk through the desert when I can surf through it like a pro? Chapter four, adulthood. Wow, quite that's the beautiful. Sorry. Quite I was, the con <laughs> just marveling at that scene. Oh, and by the way, uh, looking back at the video for a moment. Uh, 
as you can see, it's nighttime, um, but uh, slowly uh, it's going to get. Uh, this is the title screen, by the way, and now it's about to get the dawn here, and it's going to say once again, new journey. So the cycle begins anew. Okay, back to the. Okay, chapter four, adulthood. Like the contrast of the last chapter, huh? Gone is the beautiful music and gorgeous environments, and then come the darker, muted colors of the temple and subtle ambience of the music. Also, soothing the theme of adulthood is the stronger connection you now share with your partner. What uh, it means the um, the co-op partner. Yeah. While, while it's generally fun to stick together out in the desert, you see that proximity to each other becomes essential to safety. But with the giant serpents out to tear your scarf off and essentially destroy whatever confidence you once had. Something I interpreted as a metaphor for the ever-growing anxiety grow toward growing old that many adults often experience. And the two of you will often stick closer together than you, than you once did. Another thing of note is the relative lack of exploration at this point in the journey. Everything is much more streamlined than before, and the path ahead of you is much more blatant. While it doesn't serve to make you feel restricted, it does work on how at this point in life most people will have a more clear perspective on what they want to do with their lives and who they are. Chapter 5. Old Age. Yeah, that ever-growing anxiety I mentioned before, well, it's here. The rush from surfing through the desert and majestically soaring through the air, nothing but a memory. The wonder as you and your partner explore the dark, muted caverns and learn more about yourself, the good old days. Once you enter the snowy climates running the summit, you may take a like few minutes... Like the winter years. Mm. Yep. You may take a few minutes to realize just how limited your movement has become. Thank you uh, so much. Exactly. The power in your scarf is now automatically diminishing and your running speed has significantly diminished. It's also become a quite bit harder to see, with the mass amounts of snow making everything blend together visually into one massive white sheet. Just like uh, when you get old, your vision gets worse. Moving from place to place has become a fight to keep your ground, as the vicious wind pushes you further and further away from your destination. Another thing hindering your progress is the threat presented by the intimidating serpents flying in the air, seeming to make you even weaker than you already are. Nowhere is this limited movement more evident than in the final track toward the summit, when the only thing between you and your destination is one final expensive land. You're so close to your goal that despite the blistering sl cold snow, you can feel your blood pumping. But sometimes we can't reach the goal we aim for. The closer we get to the mountain, the more your fatigue gets to you. Your pace goes slower and slower with each step, until you've eventually begun to slowly limp towards the mountain. So I'm picking up. Is there more snow? Or am I just imagining it? Before you can decide on whether or not the sheet of white clouding your of like it's cutting your vision. Uh, of Iris' subconscious, you finally cannot collapse in the snow. And this time, you don't get up. Chapter 6, Self-Actualization. Not on your own, anyway. To really understand the significance of this chapter, you need to take the theory of self-actualization into account. Sometimes there's more to life than one's actual mortality. Maybe our destination wasn't a worldly place at all. Maybe our journey wasn't one we were supposed to, uh, to see the end of. So here's my theory. For dying in the wasteland, you aren't brought back to life by the sages from earlier. In fact, they take you further away from life than you would have expected. Serving the role of a group of angels, the sages bring you into the afterlife, allowing you to shoot into the sky at the velocity of a missile into the heavens, literally soaring through the air with more grace and majesty than ever before. You fly closer and closer to your destination, the one place you could never reach during your lifetime, heaven. That was beautiful. That... Oh my god. <laughs> Wow. <sighs> so that, that was so um, that, that reading was a lovely way to end this. So this that video. was so, so that was Journey, one of my favorite video games of all time, and my game of the year for 2012. Now one of mine, and I have never played it. Same here. <laughs> it's definitely going to range amongst my favorites. It may not be my favorite, but you know what? It's going to be very special for being an instant favorite of mine the moment I laid It's a small on... game, but as I said earlier in the playthrough, I'm still buying it when it comes to the PS4. It does so much, and even if you can't variate how the game goes for you, you still get the sense that it's your own adventure. Even if you're watching someone else play it. Yep. And that, my friends, is how you make a game. Well... That sort of game, anyway. For then and ado, that ends our journey as well for this commentary. Thank you for joining us on, our, on this wonderful journey. We'll see you on the next time on Swashbuckling Console Regiment Comms.